This is the Ugreen NAS DXP4800 Plus. Last year, I built my own NAS from scratch, and over the years, I've also used other well-known brand names. But for the last 30 days, I've been using this Ugreen NAS. And honestly, had I known about this earlier, I might not have gone down the DIY route. Now, full disclosure, Ugreen is sponsoring this video and provided the NAS, but all thoughts and opinions are my own after using it for 30 days. In this video, I'll show, go through some of the built-in apps that can be cloud replacements, Docker, Ugreen's NAS OS, a quick overview of setup and hard drive configurations, some hardware specs that surprised me, and a few extras, and the cherry on top of all of this. Now, one of the big reasons to own and get a NAS is you get to own your own data and potentially save money in the long run. Cloud is super convenient, don't get me wrong. It starts off cheap, but over time, the subscription fees soon add up as your storage needs increase and transfer speeds are limited by your internet speed. But with the Ugreen NAS, however, you've got a couple of options. You can use the built-in apps, Docker, or you can mix the two, of course. For instance, if you just want your pictures backed up, easy to browse, you can use the built-in photos app, upload from the web interface or Ugreen's desktop app, browse on your phone, and you can turn on auto backup from your device so photos are automatically uploaded onto the NAS without you even thinking about it. You can either tailor the auto backup schedule and how much to backup if you wish. If you've heard of apps like Image, that runs on here too, because the NAS supports Docker. Basically, if it runs on Docker, it'll run on this. And there's a very helpful tutorial to help you get Image installed on the Ugreen NAS's website. But what about if you're after a Dropbox or Google Drive style syncing? Well, with Ugreen's sync and backup app, you can. You create a sync task, pick a source on your computer and a destination on the NAS. Then you can choose two-way or one-way, whatever you prefer, and you're done. Your desktop and NAS now stay in sync and you can set up multiple sync folders too. This way it saves you some time manually transferring files with the web interface or via SMB. And you have a copy of the NAS as backup. And maybe you've come across Nextcloud, a self-hosted open source platform. Since that runs on Docker too, it runs on the new green NAS as well. Now the sync and backup also has a backup feature and it's worth mentioning a subtle difference between sync and backup. Sync mirrors changes. So if you delete it locally, depending on your settings, it'll delete it on the NAS too, so it mirrors. But backup keeps a copy on the NAS even if you delete it from the source. Think of it as archiving rather than mirroring. And depending on use case, you can use either or both. Now, when it comes to transfer speeds, well, if you're uploading large files to the cloud, it'll probably take you some time. Whereas on your local NAS, much quicker, saving you time and frustration. And I'm not even leveraging the 10 gigabit ethernet that the Ugreen NAS supports. But to improve hard disk transfer speeds, there is a little something you can do, which I'll share and talk about in the hard drive setup. Now all these third-party apps can be managed with Ugreen's neat Docker app interface. You can see all your Docker containers, start and stop them. You can search for popular Docker images to download and a very nice clean user interface. To create your own Docker containers, you can use the new project interface and it can be a little bit daunting for beginners, but there are a few tutorials out there to get popular apps up and running. For instance, I managed to get Home Assistant for some home automation and Plex if you're looking to store and manage any media and watching or streaming 4K videos, absolutely fine. Now this particular feature might not be for everyone, but let's say you accidentally delete a file or do something you regret and it's not as simple as going to the recycling bin to retrieve it. In those situations, the Ugreen NAS has two solutions which you can enable or disable. If you go into the Snapshots app, you can go to the list of available snapshots then just select the particular time you want to revert back to and just like magic, you get back to that instant in time. If you're from a software background, you can probably relate to this like database snapshots. For everyone else, it's like a save point in a game. You mess up, you just load your last save. You can adjust the schedule and retention in settings so it runs automatically. And with file versions, you can overwrite a file and you can go back to the version history and download the relevant one. Almost like having Git for your NAS. And what about when it comes to using and accessing the Ugreen NAS OS, which they call UGOS? Well, it's a nice user-friendly interface, almost PC-like. You can access your files, control panel for all your settings and user management. There's a neat interface to see your storage configurations with a nice little graphic to let you know if your hard drive bays are occupied or not. There's an app center to browse and install apps. The user interface almost reminds me of Ubuntu, which is nice. 
For instance, when I was using Unraid for the first time, there was a bit of a learning curve because the UX is not super friendly. In terms of accessing the NAS, you can access the system via web browser or the dedicated app, which is my personal favorite, saves you launching the browser and then going to the web interface. You can access the NAS remotely if you're away from your home network if you wish, which you can enable or disable. You can access the NAS via your phone and tablet devices as well. And if you're on a computer, you can of course mount it via SMB or for those hardcore people out there that prefer pure command line, you can SSH into the NAS. You will have to enable it in settings, which has a time protocol for security measures, which you can set or turn off completely. And something else I didn't expect, you can drag and drop files from your Mac onto the UI NAS in the web browser and desktop app. I mean, come on, how neat is that? Right from the start and using the NAS up until now, super simple, no hassles or faff whatsoever. You plug the NAS onto your network, you enter the find UGUI NAS URL in your browser, it finds it, hit connect, and you just follow the wizard steps and get it up and running. You also get an option during setup to enable remote access to your NAS if you want to access it outside your home network. As I mentioned earlier, you can of course skip this step entirely or do it later or restrict access to your home network only. And within a few minutes, your NAS is up and running. Well, sort of, because the final step is getting your hard disk set up and ready. You first start off by setting your storage pool and this is where you select your RAID types. There are a few RAID options and Ugreen's website has a nice breakdown of each. But the short version is the more space equals less redundancy and more redundancy means less space. I personally went for RAID 5 with the four four terabyte drives that Ugreen provided me. I personally think it's a nice balance between data redundancy and capacity. If you wanna see how much disk space is available based on the RAID type, there's a RAID calculator on Ugreen's website to play around with. Then you have to create a volume. Here you can select the volume size and the file system type. And you'll notice you can use either the whole storage in one go or split it up into smaller chunks which means you can create multiple volumes inside the same storage. Think of it like a library. The storage pool is the whole library building. Inside it, you've got different rooms. Those are your volumes. And in each room, you can decide what kind of bookshelves you want. Sturdy shelves for big, heavy books. That's ext4, great for large video files, or flexible shelves that let you keep lots of additions and backups. That's btrfs with snapshots and file versions. And that's what I did. I ended up with two volumes, one with ext4 for handling large files and another with btrfs so I can use the snapshots and file versions which I mentioned earlier in the video. And here's something very clever from Ugreen. You see the drive bays and you think, yeah, that's cool. You can easily access the drive bays, remove them and install new ones. And you get a locking key to ease the paranoia of stolen drives. No tools needed. Great. Love that. But Ugreen has made life a little bit easier. To install and remove a drive, you take the tray, press this button on the back, extend this tray clamp, place the drive in, lining up those rubber stubs to the drive holes, push the clamp back in, and you're done. No tools, no screws, no faff. And with the Ugreen NAS, it works with a variety of third-party hard drives, so no specific vendor lock-in. To check the full compatibility of hard drives, Ugreen has a whole list on their website. And this particular NAS is capable of a whopping 136 terabytes, which I personally think is plenty for all your data hoarding needs. Now, usually with NAS systems, they do tend to skimp a bit on the hardware, but I'm quite surprised with the Ugreen NAS. Now, I won't read out all the specs, feel free to check them out yourselves, but most NAS boxes give you what? Two, four gigs of RAM? This one comes with eight gigs out of the box, which is plenty to start with and supports up to 64 gigs of RAM. It also has an insane 10 gigabit ethernet, as I mentioned earlier. And if your network supports it, the speeds will be insane. And you get an Intel Pentium Gold five core processor. Usually you get a low entry spec CPU like an Intel Celeron or something. But with this processor, it's great for multitasking, 4K playback with its integrated graphics and power efficient. In terms of expandability, on the base, there's an access panel with two RAM slots. One is occupied by that eight gigs of RAM and the other is a free slot. 
You also get two NVMe slots on the other side, which if you install, you can create either a fast storage pool or create an SSD cache. If you install just the one SSD, you will have a fast read-only cache. But if you install two, you can have both fast read and write caches. So say with a basic file transfer to your NAS, you go from slow read-write speeds to your hard disk to significant read-write speed increases. Now, what about if you wanna run VMs? Well, with its included VM app and its modest eight gigs of RAM and that Intel Pentium chip, I was able to install and run Ubuntu and Windows 10 just to see if it was possible. Now, what if you want finer control? Maybe you want to put your hard drives to sleep, control fan speeds, and maybe you don't like the LEDs flashing like crazy in the evening because it may be distracting. Well, you can do that in control panel. You have settings for fan speed. You can turn the LED indicator on or off, dim them in certain periods of the day and manage power. You can also add scheduled shutdown and startup times as well as putting your hard drives to sleep when they're idle. All this in a compact size case. You also get a magnetic fan cover on the back for easy cleaning. And finally, how quiet is it? Well, let me show you. So after 30 days, what are my thoughts? The Ugreen NAS is easy to set up, quiet, and powerful enough for both beginners and tinkerers. The built-in apps and App Center cover the basic needs. And while the App Center isn't flooded with apps, I think over time, it'll build up. But there's Docker support, so that gives you the flexibility to run almost anything. I've built my own NAS before, and whilst that was fun, and a lot of research and time finding the right parts, the case, I wanted a small NAS case, and not everything was readily available to buy. With this, everything is really packaged in one compact box. And you know what the cherry on top of all of this is? You don't have to run UGOS. You can run Unraid or TrueNAS if you like. The chap at NAS Compares has a detailed article and video all about this. So you get all the hardware in this box and install your preferred NAS OS if you wish. So what would you personally use a NAS for? Photos, backups, file syncing, a bit of everything? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to click on either of these boxes that YouTube recommends. I'll see you next one.